How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to episode five of the Shock Block. Today, I'm joined by Mikey Levine. Mikey, uh, tell the listeners a little bit about well, a little bit about what you do. Um, a little bit about me is I'm a full time videographer, photographer. Um, I work with a lot of NBA players, all the way from like um, not just Indiana, all the way to like Sacramento, all across the country, man. And um, yeah, I mean that's really all I do right now, and just trying to stay safe during these crazy times. Um. So you just recently picked up a brand deal with uh, Recavo Pro. So yeah, yeah, I did. How do you stay in shape with that, or how do you stay in shape during quarantine? I mean, during quarantine, it's been kind of tough, man. You kind of have to get creative with it. Um, I'm kind of lucky. I got a trampoline in my backyard. Um, I got people around me that are really pushing me to stay in shape and whatnot. So that's been helping a lot. Yeah, with that brand deal, um, when you got when you first got that, what's the process kind of like for that? Um, it all happened really naturally. It was crazy. So um, I'm fairly new to TikTok as well. I've been on it for like a month, maybe. And um, I just did a video where I was using it for like a minute, literally nothing else. I was just using it. And uh, I sent it to him because it got like, I want to say it was like 330k views right now. And um, they were all about it. Um, they wanted to sign me up as like a branded athlete. And yeah, it's, it's actually uh, it's right here. This bad boy. Yeah, whenever – I mean, you'd mentioned TikTok a little bit. I remember one day you pop up my For You page. It was the uh, – uh, it was like the odd job check. And I was like, no way, this page just dunker popped up my uh, <laughs> For You page. So that moment yeah. you wake up and you have like 330K views and 65K likes, what's that feeling like? It was crazy, man. I've never had that kind of exposure in my life. And what's crazy is – so when I started TikTok, like – maybe a day or two before I posted that um, my friend and I spent like four hours making one. It's not on my profile anymore, but we spent like four hours making this like crazy one about coronavirus. It was ridiculous. And uh, it got like no attention. And then I was like, you know what? I'll just post some phone clips. So I posted that one. It's like six seconds long. I posted it and it blew up in like a day. And I was like, I didn't even know what to do. I thought it was like crazy, man. It was, it was wild. Did that help you in other social medias, kind of, whenever that blew um, up? A little bit, a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely – TikTok has been such a big platform for me because, like, there's – you get so much exposure over, like – I mean, like, Instagram's been cool, but it's way harder to blow up on Instagram than anything else. And I'm mainly, like, Instagram and now TikTok, I guess, which is weird to say. Yeah, it's like – I think it's about <laughs> once a day you make a post for about the past month you've done that. So yeah, how yeah, hard is it to keep consistent? consistent? Um, it hasn't been too bad because I've been using some phone clips that I've had. Um, I'm super lucky to just have experiences that people like to like, you know, tap into and watch. Um, but other than that, no, it hasn't been too hard, except I'm running out of phone clips. So it's getting kind of tough. Um, do you keep up with analytics a little bit? Like times view more people are more likely to watch it. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And I've experimented with it myself a little bit. Like I realized like people in the morning don't watch my stuff and that's just i don't know why like i try to post when people wake up and check their phone it's the first thing i do and no one likes my stuff but i realize like my window is 3 p.m about and then that's when all all my videos that have blown up have been at 3 p.m so i don't know why but how has tiktok like helped you besides getting viewers on there and a little bit more of a fan base I mean, the sponsorship's been giant for me. Um, that's, like, such a big step in my career, which has been really, really cool. Um, I'm getting more recognized for, like, my photo and video stuff, which has been really, really cool. Um, but other than that, it hasn't, like, it hasn't helped me a lot just because it's been only a month. But, like, give me give me a couple more months, man, and we'll check back in. Yeah, you have, like, 10K followers, correct? Yeah, yeah, I hit 10K a couple of days ago, which has been super weird. <laughs> So when you look back, what do you think like ever that a social media platform would have helped you blow up that much? Mm, no, not at all. And the thing is, I'm, I actually beat myself up about it. I'm, I was so like, I don't want to be on TikTok. Like it's for kids. I'm everyone else is on it. I'm not going to get on it. And then right when I got on, I was like, wow, I totally see why people are on this app. Yeah. Um, I feel like, for, yeah. I got sucked in completely. Yeah. I feel like every guy kind of is always like, yeah, I don't want to be on this app. I feel like it's too childish or something. Oh, like I noticed I yeah. was like that and a couple of my friends were. And then that's all Definitely. I'm on like seven hours a day is TikTok. Swear, swear. And the timing of it with the with the virus and everything going on, everyone being home, it's just been it's been nice to have just to like kind of get sucked into. 
Yo, um, what's, no, what's sorry. Some of your favorite TikToks that you've watched? Um, that I've watched. Yeah, that's hard, man. Because I like binge watch TikToks, man. It's bad. It's been really bad. I I don't think I could name one off the top of my head. Uh, there's too many. There's too many funny people out there. Do you have any favorite TikToker, or at least like a couple of them? Favorite TikTokers. I'm um, a lot of some. A couple years ago, when I was a senior in high school, I went on tour with a bunch of athletes from Red Bull across the country. And they're on TikTok, and they have, like, over a million followers individually. Like, it's been crazy seeing them blow up on it. So, seeing them do well on the app is pretty cool. So, I think they're, they're – shout out to, like – you guys aren't going to know any of them. Shout out to, like, Bailey Payne, Tanner. Wait, they're all, like, in the uh, flipping tricking community, which has been really cool to see blow up on TikTok. So, you work – do you still work for the Pacers with the dunk team, or was that in the past? So, I didn't, I didn't jump this season – Um. So, like, a lot of people don't realize this, but, like, going all the way above the rim that high and landing, like, repetitively, like, sucks. Like, like it hurts a lot, and it was a lot of impact on my ankles, so I didn't do it this in. Yeah, so, but now with all this TikTok, like, hype, I guess, I'm thinking about maybe going and jumping for, like, the Cavaliers, the Bucks. Um, the Bulls would be really cool, but that's such a big city. I don't know how the competition is out there. Yeah, um... When you originally – you're from Indiana, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So was it – whenever you always watched the Pacers, did you ever decide – like what made you decide that you wanted to try out for the team? <laughs> Dude, it was crazy. Um, I didn't start going to games till like maybe 2016. And basically I was just watching the game. I was there. It was probably my second game, and I saw them jumping, and I was like, yo, I could do that. Kind of as a joke, as a joke. But um, I did believe it. And so I went on Instagram one night. Went through the hashtag, like, Indiana Pacer dunk team or whatever. And there was one video on it. One video. And it was a dude on the team, and he was just, like, doing flips in a gymnastics gym. And I DM'd him and was like, bro, like, I would love to come jump with you guys sometime. Like, I can flip. Um, If if the opportunity is ever there, I'd love to come. And he was like, go for it. The tryouts are such and such days. And I was 17 at the time. So I was like, when I showed up to tryouts, I was the youngest by far. Everyone was like 26, 27, like way older than me, man. And the craziest part was I didn't have my driver's license. So my parents were driving me. I got my license super late because I always had people driving me places. So I just put it off. And yeah, my parents had to drive me um, to and from these tryouts. And I mean, looking back on it, I'm super, super thankful for it because like that's how I have a lot of the phone clips. Like I posted my tryout on TikTok and it did pretty well. So um yeah, it, that's how that kind of came about. And I made the team, which was insane, and I didn't think I was going to make it. Um, and, but the craziest part was, too, is I couldn't even jump till I turned 18. And I had, like, half a year till I turned 18. So it was kind of like a mess for a little bit. So was there anything that was hard about the tryouts itself besides the um, age? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. So I had a huge learning curve because, like, jumping out of trampoline that's like this, because I'm so used to, like, backyard trampolines – an angle trampoline like it was so crazy to like have to adjust all my jumping and whatnot and like like I said the impact man like it was like crazy to feel that force so I had to kind of get over that but um other than that I was really comfortable like doing the flips um I've always been kind of outgoing so like dancing when I can't dance and doing all the silly stuff to try out um didn't really phase me but it was really fun. I mean, the people on there are great people. So it was really um, – it was a great atmosphere. People were really encouraging. So it was cool. Have you, have you always um, – like, when did you begin flipping? Uh, I began I, – when I was, like, 12 in my backyard with a friend. And um, what's crazy about that is that kind of – it went from on backyard trampolines to doing, like, parkour free running. Uh, just like around the city and then when I was 13 he was 14 we auditioned for America's Got Talent um, got filmed for a commercial it was it was like a crazy experience but just from like jumping off backyard trampolines it's led up to all of this yeah you mentioned the America's Got Talent video that was another <laughs> one of your TikToks that did pretty well so, yeah yeah um, what was that experience like uh, doing that um, for America's Got Talent it was cool. I mean, like, I would not – I wouldn't change a thing about it. But, like, if I'm being completely honest, it ruins TV for me. Like, I I don't watch TV anymore because of it. Because, man, everything down to a T is, like, fake. Super fake. Sorry to break to everyone. But, like, America's Got Talent, all these shows where you vote 
your voting goes nowhere. Like it, it, they choose, they know the winner before they air the show. So when you were there, um, was it, was it about like the whole cast of people that's trying out was there with you as well? Or was it just the commercial crew? Um, it was like, there, there were so many people there. It was at the Indiana convention center downtown. Um, there, but it was just me and my friend that I started flipping with that tried out, but it was like, we sat there all day, got our audition in. Um, and then they loved our audition so much. They had to stay like another six hours to do the commercial, which was really, really interesting. And like, if you look in the TikTok, you can kind of see all the extras walking with us. And um, I don't know if I put music to it. I think I did actually. In the original video, you can hear the director say like, ready, set, action. So it, it was it was a cool experience, man. You Didn't you, uh, was it you or your friend that face planted in that commercial? It was me. It was, was me. It so was, was that a little bit embarrassing for you at that time? De- definitely. And the thing was like, we had to get there at like 7 a.m. We didn't film that commercial until maybe like 5 or 6 p.m. So I was dude, I was gassed. I was so tired. And this was first take in front of all these people. I throw that flip and I just go straight to my face and I just had to shake it off. Um, keep moving. But we did a couple more takes. and I, I did fine. So when you uh, went back to school, did you like, did you kind of like show it off a little bit? You're like, Hey, I was in America's got talent commercial. <laughs> I got so, a lot of it done. Um, I mean, yeah, kind of. So I was kind of extra about it too. Before the audition, we like I was making like these stupid and I have pictures on like these stupid Instagram posts like 10 days till America's got talent nine days till America's got talent just like hyping it up way too much and um that got people talking around school but did other that, than that yeah. did that kind of like grow did more people kind of happen like want to talk to you more or like were more people kind of like oh what the heck's this kid doing um so I went to Westfield middle school. And so during middle school, I think other schools aren't like this, but it was just seventh and eighth grade. And I was in seventh and the dude I did it with was an eighth. So like, I don't know, people just kind of knew it happened. It wasn't like, um, Westfield's not big enough where there's like, you can't really not be noticed. It's pretty small. Like people just know everyone there. Um, so yeah, I think everyone kind of knew about it. Everyone was really excited for us. There were like there were some people that were totally hating on us, but I mean that that just comes with the territory. Um, so back to dunking for the Pacers. Yeah, I kind of want to talk about game time a little bit. So going out there, your first ever time, uh, going on the floor in halftime. What was that experience like? I mean, it's crazy. Like, have you ever been on the floor of the the Pacers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, being on the floor, man, with all the lights on you, like, you don't realize how many seats there are in that building. Like, it's a whole complete different experience, man. And, like, yeah, it's 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 crazy. But I feel like I live for the adrenaline. I live for that kind of, like, on-edge feeling. So, I mean, it, it didn't really phase me. And I love – and we're, like, we were such a family in that team. Um, yeah, everyone kind of made me feel comfortable. Um, so, also with game time, I mean – was there was there any fans that afterwards, like after the game, like you happened to walk out and they would notice you from the dunk team or no? I mean, not really. Um, we all kind of had the same uniform. It was like a generic Pacer uniform with the number zero zero on it. Um, I don't think we really stood out that much. It's funny how many people on TikTok, though, say like, hey, I remember seeing you. Hey, I have videos of you, which is so crazy to me because you don't when you're with the actual Pacers team, you feel like such a small part of that whole organization. Um, you look, do you still have a Jersey from whenever you participated in the team or no? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's somewhere around here. It's somewhere around here. I definitely still wear the shorts a lot when I hoop. Um, I have like shoes they gave me. I have a bunch of stuff that I do. The amount of gear that they give you is ridiculous. So directly with like the dunk team and the Pacers front office, do you guys kind of work directly with them a little bit or no? Not at all. Um, so, like, we would possibly do, like, some events where there'd be, maybe be, like, two players there. But um, we never really – I think in our contract it said we weren't allowed to go up to the players. But the um, what was cool is during that time I actually started doing, like, photography and videography for some of the players way on – like, it was completely separate from the dunk team. So I started building relationships with the players on the team. Um, completely like not related to the dunk team and yeah which was which was really really cool because now I'm like friends with some of them um I don't need like yeah the trampoline team didn't really do any of that for me 
Yeah, I noticed you're playing Edmund Summers, uh, playing Call of Duty with Edmund <laughs> Summers today. So, oh, that's uh, my boy. Shout out Ed. Shout out Evan. So was he one yeah. of the guys that you, kind of, uh, that you did photography and videography for, or no? Yeah, yeah. So um, after I got off that tour with Red Bull, um, literally right when I got home, the trainer, shout out Joey Burton. He's a huge trainer in Indiana. Um, he was looking for a photography intern and I had all these pictures of like these Red Bull athletes. So I sent it to him, said, Hey, I'd love to intern. And I got in that gym like almost immediately. But the thing was I had to like work my way up to the NBA players. I was shooting like high schoolers, some like lower college players. And then like after doing that and grinding, I became like the main NBA person and I got to build relationships with them. And yeah, Edmund was one of them. And I didn't even get close to Edmund till like, a couple like maybe a month ago when we started playing call of duty together um now we play every day like i yeah it's crazy has there been anything that he said to you that's really affected him during quarantine uh in basketball um i mean yeah there there's a lot of stuff we talk about um we try to kind of like not talk about basketball that much either because it's his day job um, I'm sure all the fans want to talk about it with him. and But, yeah, like getting the back door, kind of like the behind the scenes is really, really cool. I think one of the coolest things he told me, though, is 2K the game, um, like basketball. Uh, when they do their face scans here, they pull up with a truck, and I guess they pull up with like a bunch of consoles, and you get to just like choose what as many consoles as you want, take them home. So he was playing he had like four xboxes at his crib just chilling in boxes and i was like dude that's ridiculous like it, yeah that that's something that really stuck with me for some reason um is um the pacers you mentioned 2k have you ever played 2k with the pacers before or no um no but ed actually just set up his xbox so he can run 2k and i'm actually super hyped for that because um online he has a little nba logo above his head so oh, like yeah yeah so it'll attract a bunch of people and i'm just excited to just like see that crowd come and he said he doesn't even like playing 2k though because like people just like to talk too much on it and i i could see that yeah i was just playing this morning and i noticed that too uh <laughs> yeah it's a very bad uh toxic game though <laughs> definitely definitely and like on call of duty whenever we play we mute everyone because we don't want and like my my party's private so like no one knows he's in the league or anything like i posted on my instagram story but that's about it yeah um other than edmund summers and a couple of the pacers players uh you've worked with kyle guy glenn robinson the third um, yeah so Glenn's my closest my second to closest one um I built a super good relationship with Glenn he actually I think this was like two years ago maybe it was a year he gave me these unreleased shoes that he has their signature um, I don't know if you can see the Glenn Robinson logo on that and he signed them for me and everything and he uh yeah he gave me these which were like this was insane to get um which was really really cool and the thing about Glenn is before I even knew him, my friend got me this picture. He was doing a meet and greet at, a, at like Castleton Mall and got me this signed picture by Glenn. And then, you know, like a couple months later, I start working with him. He gives me these shoes and now we're like, now we're friends, man. And it's it's been a crazy experience. Yeah, what's it like meeting? Because um, I'm sure as a kid, you didn't really think that you'd ever like, get the chance to meet an NBA player and like be close with them. So when you yeah, find that chance to, what's it like? Um. It, it's wild. I remember walking into the gym and first seeing Glenn and thinking like, oh my gosh, like he won the dunk championship. Um, like he, he's so big time and being starstruck, like completely starstruck. I was the most starstruck probably around like Yogi Ferrell. I don't know why. I just think being from Indiana and him being like such a legendary Hoosier, um, that was like huge for me. And, but then over time, like, trust me, like I, I genuinely love what I do, but it definitely like, you don't get starstruck anymore because you start building relationships and you just like kind of cool out. You just like, yeah, yeah, definitely. But it's not like I count my, I count my lucky stars every day, man. Like it's, it's great. It's, it's such a cool experience and not everyone gets it. So I'm definitely, definitely lucky for it. Um, from, so did you have to go over to Sacramento when you uh, shot for Kyle guy or did you did he come over? Here? No. So Kyle's actually from here. Kyle's from Lawrence and um, his trainer, uh, shout out Derek Grant. He is a really good friend of mine. Um, he trained Kyle from like, I want to say like high school and got him all the way through UVA to the league. 
and um, I got invited to a workout, um, shot his workout for a while, and then didn't even hear from Kyle for a really long time. And then he followed me out of nowhere, which was like, that one, okay, that one was crazy. Uh, Kyle guy following me was insane. So that was, that was huge. Um, so a little bit with your photography side and videography, videography um, what kind of shots do you normally try to go for whenever you're setting up? Um, I really try to get like low to the ground. So it makes the players look like pretty tall. Um, not that they're not tall already. Um, it just makes you feel kind of like more in, in the picture. Um, I try to go for a lot of action shots, really feel like he like halfway through dunking or just like really getting the action in and not like the boring, like free throws or something. Um, that's kind of what I aim for. Um, what's one of the trickiest things about trying to get those, uh, trying to get those certain shots that you want? I'm constantly moving, man. Like I'm breaking a sweat when I'm shooting these players because they're always changing. Um, the drills are always changing. So I think just like keeping up with the fast pace of like the, the workouts is, is probably the hardest part. Has there been any of them that shared your, um, shared your videography and photography onto their social? Oh stuff? yeah. Yeah. So Edmund uh, has posted a bunch. Glenn's posted a bunch. Um, Kyle posted my video this is crazy i posted it on my instagram went to take a nap for like an hour and then during that time he posted on his story and i woke up and it had like i don't even know like 2500 views on my instagram which was crazy on my instagram and uh, i was like yo like and like four thousand likes i don't even know it, i i could look at the numbers but um i told my girlfriend i was like i think i got hacked like i think someone signed me up for like a bot because like i don't know what happened and then i saw that he put it on his story and it was the engagement from his story was crazy. Um, you've also worked with, you've also done photography and videography for um, Cardi B. So what was that? Yeah. Like? Um, as well as Supreme Patty and a couple other guys. So. <laughs> um, okay. To start with the Cardi B, Kevin Gates and Sweetie concert. Um, I was working for this media company here in Indy. Um, I mean that, that it kind of fell apart, but basically my friend, was supposed to shoot the concert right he got hit up by cardi b's manager and he just like couldn't do it. i don't remember if he was out of state or something so he threw me cardi b cardi b's manager's number and so we started talking um i met up with the manager later that no it was like the day after later that day um at a jw marriott downtown and we met cardi sweetie kevin gates um and then we drove over to banker's life and we got like all backstage stuff. We got to be on the stage. Um, it was it was so crazy because I don't really shoot that many concerts. But um, like this was one of the pictures I got, which is like super super cool. Um, yeah, that that concert was really really awesome. And then like Supreme Patty, <laughs> that was a super weird situation because the media company I was with, uh, media company, it was more like social media. It was like me and two other people. But um, one of the friends of the owner of the company flew Supreme Patty out for his birthday party. And we followed, we did like their media the whole day. We got to hang out with them. I'm um, just like follow them, do all this. And they, he was, he was kind of weird because he was super quiet. A lot of these influencers that I've worked with are like pretty introverted, which is crazy. He didn't do anything crazy. No squirting lemons in his eyes. None of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um... So does are you and him still kind of close or have you guys talked since then? I'm not I'm not really close with Supreme Patty. I have a really really good relationship with Supreme Patty's main videographer though. Uh shout out Ryan Keith. He um he like lives with them. He's with him 24/7. Ryan's a great dude. He's a super good content creator. Um yeah, so our relationship is really really cool, which I which I enjoy a lot. Um so what kind of Whenever you were little, would you have looked at it and been think, thought that you would have been doing photography? Or was that something like that? No. Um, I mean, because of the flipping and doing, like, the parkour, that's when we kind of started doing uh, – I started filming our clips. Um, if you go deep into YouTube, you can find some of them, I'm sure. Um, we started doing some flips and recording them, throwing up little, like, compilations of us doing stuff in the backyard as kids. And that kind of got me on, like, the editing side of, like, video. I started at video. Then um, my sister always had a camera around, so then I started taking pictures. And one thing led to an, to the next, and, like, I don't even know how I got here, man. It, it's been crazy. I feel like it all happened in, like, a blink of an eye. Yeah, I think for your 20th birthday Instagram post, it was kind of like you talked about how 
as soon as you turned 19, it was just like the craziest year of your life in like a good way. So yeah. Like, yeah. Was that really when everything took off then? Um, I don't know. Like, I feel like it all gradually kind of happened once that Red Bull tour happened when I was, I, yeah, I was 18 at the time, but after the Red Bull tour, once I got that under my belt, man, it was like, dude, everything just kind of lined up and like what, whether it was like the NBA players to like, if you just go down my and like I've had opportunities to fly to LA for a lot because I do work down there, like video work, like the traveling experiences I've gotten from all this has been probably the best part. Like I've been able to travel and see the like the country, which sounds sad, not the world, uh, the country, which is really, really cool. So when you look back, what kind of advice would you have given yourself um, with doing flips, photography, videography? What kind of advice would you given yourself from now to then? Um, the first thing, the first thing I would tell myself is, dude, stretch. Like I did not take that seriously enough. So like that's why the impact, man, of the trampolines. Like I'm always sore now from like doing the flips on concrete way back. And so yeah, I took, I didn't take stretching very seriously. So I think I tell myself that. But uh, as far as photo and video, I just tell myself like, yo, like keep going, like because there were there were times where I would just kind of like push it aside, and um just like not not really think about it at all but i mean media is so important now like with instagram so heavy like tiktok um just like a videographer or a photographer they're they're so huge in this in this day of age so i would have just told myself like keep doing you and like you'll be rewarded and it's happened all right well that's about all we have though but i want to thank you so much for doing this oh yeah yeah thank you for having me man appreciate you uh, it's really great to see, I mean, the success you're having on TikTok. I mean, I remember the day I saw my For You page. I was like, no way. I was like, this guy actually popped up my For You page. And for a while, I thought about, <laughs> like, I should interview him. But then I finally did it recently. And it was just, that was kind of surreal to me to have that opportunity to interview you. So, Oh, man, that's crazy. I appreciate you hitting me up, man, anytime. And, like, man, I don't, I don't even think 10K is, like, that much right now. Like, I see people, like, I see these high school girls on there that have, like, 100K. And like, but I've told myself, like, like in my, my post yesterday, I told, I, my caption was, if you ever see me dancing on this app, I've sold out. So like, I've really tried to like make it. So if I'm not going to like, I'm not going to do those dances, I'm going to like really show talent. Um, Cause I feel like longevity is super important. And I don't think these like kids that are dancing, if they like have this platform, they can't do anything after this. Like if TikTok shut down tomorrow, what would they have? So I think that's like my biggest thing right now is not not dancing on TikTok. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for doing this, though. Yeah, yeah, of course. Best of luck with photography and videography. I hope it all goes well on all this ends too. But um, again, thank you for coming on. And yeah, yeah, it's been awesome.